everybody. Um, I hope that you had a lovely half term, you managed to do some nice things for yourself and recharge those batteries ready for this half term. We know that this half term is going to be yet another challenging one for us all. Um, the mocks are approaching, the second series of mocks. Um, but then, once Easter arrives, we will be on that final, final part of your A-level journey. This morning, I wanted to uh, bring in an external speaker to talk to you about something that's really sort of prominent in today's world. We all know that mental health issues are really in the news at the moment, especially with young people. Young boys are, are very much in the news at the moment in terms of anxiety, depression, worries, <coughs> all affecting our health. And that is something that will affect one in four people as we move through our lives. Now, if we think about that for a minute, that would be approximately 25 people in this room. And if we look around, there aren't that many people in this room, really. But 25 of us, at some point in our lives, will be affected by mental health issues. So I think it's really important that we're all fully aware that that happens. And it may happen to one of us as we progress through our lives. So that brings me on to introduce Jack, Jack Nolan, who's here this morning with us, who is going to talk to you about absolutely that <coughs> and about his story really, I'm not going to sort of give anything away, I'm going to let Jack talk to you about it, but his story um, clearly linked to these issues and how he's coped with that and how he's here actually today. So I'll hand over to you Jack. Right, thank you for that. Yeah, my name's Jack Nolan and today I'm going to share with you my story of how I've got through some difficult circumstances in my life. I'm suffering with anxiety, depression and even psychosis. I've unfortunately been a victim of crime or, and even been bullied throughout my school years. So I'm going to cut to the chase. When I was in primary school, I used to get bullied because I cried all the time. You know, I was that bit of a weak kid, bit of a weird kid. I used to just like, you know, get upset. And uh, I, I know, and if you're that you know, kid who gets upset in school, you know how hard it can be to make friends and find people who can connect with you. So I used to get bullied a lot. And even the teachers would say to me, oh yeah, you know, um, there's nothing like his brother, is there? You know, because my brother was like the successful kid, he was the athlete, he did all the great things and that. And I was like the, the run of the family, you could say. So basically, when I got to high school, I seen this as an opportunity to reinvent myself a little bit. You know, because no one knew who I was. So I seen this as a way to sort of, you know, you know, no one knew me so far. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to go through all the different phases, the different trends. You know, one minute as a bit of a child, one minute as a bit of a geek, one minute I was trying to be the cool kid. But I still couldn't fit in, I was still the outcast. So after you know trying to fit in and all that kind of stuff, what you do when you're trying to go off through high school, I ended up just trying to focus on the grades, and I was really bad at maths. So I've seen this as uh, an opportunity to try and you know get my grades and not worry about being the outcast. So I found myself a teacher who was a maths teacher, and I said to him, oh, you know, please sir, can you? I know you're busy. I understand how much work you've got to do, but you know, could you like teach him some maths after school? So I was fortunate that like he said, yeah. So he was like training me like a rocker, you know, he like giving me all the punches like one, two, three, four, maths this, maths that, algebra this, all this kind of you know, different stuff that was going through me, I was trying to learn, which was quite, you know, exciting because I never had the opportunity to connect with a teacher before because I've always been looked at as this sort of stupid kid. So I was still suffering with unknown dyslexia at this time. So he was trying to like figure out why I wasn't remembering things, why I was not getting the sort of, um, you know, the knowledge that I needed, even though I was getting told all these things all the time. So. You know, and then, uh, then I can tell you this funny story, you know. As um, all the you know, negative conditioning that I was getting when I was growing up, I was, um, you know, talking to careers advisors and, and the careers advisors came and gave me the um, traditional, well, you can't do that, Jack, because um, it's unrealistic when I started sharing my goals and my ambitions of wanting to act and, you know, act and, you know, work in TV and do all these different, you know, things. And he was like, well, it's unrealistic. So when I shared my story, when I said, well, not my personal story, but stuff that I learned from self-teaching, I said, it's unrealistic to get in a plane, fly across to another country, but fortunately, the right brothers didn't think so. I said, it's unrealistic to turn the light switch on and the light to come on. I said, fortunately, Thomas Edison didn't think so. 
And then he looked at me and he said, he said, um, oh, like, you know, just sort of looked at me as if I was the weird kid again. So um, I just sort of carried on. But like, he's limited himself, you know, all the way through his own life. And he's trying to pass that value on to me. I thought, the, only, the value you should take is off people who've done things, who've done the things that you want to do. So seek the advice, the correct advice, from people who are doing the stuff that you want to do. You know, whether you want to be a footballer, go and try and speak to some footballers, whether you want to be an actor, get yourself an acting coach, all these different things that you might want to go into. Get the correct advice. Because if you don't, it will limit your expectations of yourself. And if you take the wrong advice, just imagine that you're never going to get where you're going to be, because how can you become something from someone who's not already there? So moving on to like, say, you know, when I was going to university, or well, college, well, I got into college, and uh, you know, I ran smooth, you know, no one knew who I was, you know, for, for the first time. And um, I just got on with grades, and I came out with like, distinction stars and stuff like that, which I was, you know, very lucky to get. And, um, but um, you know, I'll come back to that later, but I'm gonna share with you a story of, um, you know, when I was kind of getting my maths, you see, I failed. Even though I was learning from the best teachers, I just like, couldn't get it. And it was, uh, you know, distressing. And at the same time, life threw another curveball at me. I was unfortunately mugged and attacked by now, group with knives. But in that life threatening situation, the last thing I was thinking about was algebra, which gave me a perspective that even though I failed, it would be the making of me. It would determine who I was and who I am to be. So moving back into, you know, going to Salford and stuff like that, and, uh, I realised when I was at Salford that it wasn't, you know, I thought it was a land of opportunity because I got an unconditional offer. On first time, I wasn't judged for not being good at maths. So then I sort of believed that, you know what, this is where I'm supposed to be because this is where everything gets created. But after a year of being in the course and getting experience in different areas of production, working with big names and exciting opportunities like working with Amir Khan, Lorraine Keller, you name it, I probably spoke to him and met him through the industry. And I was very lucky and fortunate to be exposed to all this greatness. But then I went back to university and I realised that I wasn't getting taught the things that I wanted, that I needed to progress in my career, which didn't settle with me in the right way after seeking out you know, teachers and telling them what I wanted to do and how can I get that. They sort of disregarded me again like the same old you know, stories what I heard in the past. But not to say that university is a bad thing, it's just whether in anything in life, if something doesn't fit like a glove, you've got to move and make a decision, which leads me to saying that you've got to tailor make things for you. So what I mean by this is, like, if you're in an environment that doesn't work for you, you've got to make a decision to move. And it even comes to your learning. You've got to know yourself. Because if you don't know yourself, you know, you're going to burn yourself out. Because when I was, like, rushing towards my dreams and my goals and trying to get all my academics in order, I was running so fast, like who say both, that I lost all oxygen, metaphorically speaking, that I just burnt myself out which led me on to going in through a breakdown. So when I went through this breakdown, I was in a psychiatric unit where I was in, you know, the most worst situation I could ever imagine for myself. You know, it was all, all this negative stuff I was feeling and experiencing was like a dangerous and vulnerable area to be in. And it was, well, you know, I was around people. It was, you know, I'm gonna be straight with you. They was potentially gonna do themselves in. So I put on my enthusiasm, all my strength, my passion, my flow into trying to make these people see, you know, the bigger picture of why they should be here. So in that dark time, I realised that there was a little bit of light, and it made me realise that how valuable life is and the opportunities that we take. So the reason why I think a lot of you is maybe experiencing stress and anxiety is because you're doing things in a way that doesn't align with yourself. And what I mean by this is that you might be, um, you know, you might be doing one hour extra a night, two hours extra a night, three hours extra a night, extra work. But what you need to do is see what fits you and remember to reward yourself at the end of the things that you do. Because if you don't, then you can, um, you know, you can burn yourself out and create a lot of dangerous situations for yourself, which isn't, you know, where you want to be, trust me, because I've been there. And I'll tell you some experience, not something that I've made up. Because if you don't, you know, get yourself in order, you know, by structuring yourself a tailor-made suit, I keep referring to this, is because, you know, if you've got self-structure and uh, a way of, you know, learning that's going to help you by, you know, doing things in order, so say you do one hour a night, see how you feel, do two hours, see how you feel, 
But don't get to the point where you're doing like working 24 seven where you're losing your marbles a little bit because it's not gonna do you any favors. And another point that I'm gonna say is that when I was going through these difficult situations, I started diving into all these creative works, you know, from storytelling to writing books, to writing poems, which I'm gonna share one of you. I saw that I'm gonna share a poem with you today. What I reflected on my past, which has made me, you know, more creative in what I do. And it starts with, I wear this shirt that defines me. I used to be a frightened kid, but now I've got those behind me. Often, but not a lot. These are the types of people that understand me. We come from different worlds, but we see with the same eye. The hustler's eye. An enemy to my left and a friend who's a spy. And these are the types of people you become aware of. Hidden, deluded by lines. Who's that from the woodworks? What a surprise. You can't live by truth when you wear those eyes. Untrustable, no surprise. This is the life I live, no lies. 17 years old, 18 years old, denies what is told. That you have to grow up. By growing up, other people define. Leaving your childish dreams behind. Falling for average, the average is mine. You see, I'm becoming who I'm supposed to be. You fell for average, but what's that supposed to be? Stacking shelves and scanning codes. But the truth do you live over the doing as you're told? Someone's casted, you don't blame me. You see, the money's an illusion. You think you're better than me. Living out another person's life, it's not mine to be. Surrounded by jealous people, blinded to be. And my enemies laugh at the failure of me. But I'm becoming something they can never be. Now I'm going to let that sit with you just for a moment. So my top tips of dealing with stress and anxiety is first going back to the Rico feeling that I'm saying about tailor making your suits. So what I mean by this is, again, structuring yourself, having balance. So balance is a key part of just like, you know, getting yourself redder, knowing yourself, enjoying life, socializing with your friends, having that balance of fun and work at the same time. Because a lot of us are in this age now where you can do that because you've got phones and technology that can you know, help you, you know, do your work at the same time. But remember, you've got to limit your distractions. So you know, turn your phone off, get off away from the PlayStation, because I know a lot of you will be like on that Twitter, on that Facebook. I know you're at that age now where you're going to be chatting with girls and talking to boys and all that kind of carry on. You know what I mean? I know I see, I see you smiling there, I see you're doing it. I know you're on uh, you know, Facebook and all that. But um, I think that you should just limit your distractions. It's a key part of you know, becoming success, successful in life. So this is the end of the speech, but if any of you would like to ask any questions or anything that you think I might have missed, please feel free to just share your thoughts with me. Dyslexia. He was then in, in, involved in some crime, which was not very nice. Obviously hospitalised, which is something that's really tough to go through. But yet he's here today, able to stand up in front of all of you, which is a real tall order, and share with you his story. And what a fantastic poem that you've written. Uh, and I know that Jack is putting all his energies now into writing, creative stories. Uh, and poetry, etc. We do wish you success in the future, Jack. Oh, thank you very much.